morning, uh, Louisiana has been feeling the impacts of Hurricane Delta. Uh, and at this time, uh, everyone uh, in the storm's path really needs to be focused on sheltering in place. Uh, since yesterday, we have added uh, successfully six parishes to the list of those authorized Category B, which are emergency protective measures. Uh, and this happened earlier today, and that's Sabine Parish, Natchitoches, Vernon, LaSalle, Grant, and Wynn. Hurricane Delta is behaving much as it was forecasted to uh, at our last update. Uh, we do know that tropical storm force winds are at the coast of Louisiana as we speak. As of the 1 p.m. update, which happened just a couple of minutes ago. Delta is currently a Category 2 storm, so it is starting to weaken slightly as it approaches the coast. Uh, we do expect it to make landfall as a Category 2 in southwest Louisiana this evening. I think the rough time is sometime between about 7 p.m. and 9 p.m. tonight. The good news is that Delta is moving relatively quickly at about 13 miles per hour with forward speed. Uh, and as I mentioned before, the hurricane hunters are seeing a modest amount of weakening and the uh, maximum winds are actually down uh, from uh, 120 miles per hour earlier, uh, as I mentioned, down uh, to category two strength. Uh, but the fact that it's weakening should not cause anyone to lose focus or to lose vigilance uh, because this is still a very strong storm that's going to bring significant impacts to the state of Louisiana. Between Lake Charles and Lafayette and to points south of Alexandria, uh, sustained winds of greater than 74 miles per hour and gusting to uh, more than 100 miles per hour likely. Storm surge inundation is already underway with the peak of the storm surge uh, coming tonight and then beginning to improve tomorrow. Uh, between the Rockefeller Wildlife Refuge and Morgan City, they can expect 7 to 11 feet of surge. Between Holly Beach and the, and the Rockefeller Wildlife Refuge, it's 5 to 8 feet of surge. From Morgan City to Port Fouchon, 4 to 7 feet three to five feet between the Sabine Pass and Holly Beach, and then two to four feet for the rest of the coast. Southwest Louisiana can expect six to 10 inches of rain and locally heavier amounts are possible uh, where those rain bands form. And it is very important to remember and to have in mind that the impacts from this storm can and will be felt well outside the tracking cone. In fact, that's already happening in places across South Louisiana. Uh, so don't get fixated on the track. Uh, and there is a increased likelihood of hurt, I'm sorry, of tornadoes uh, in Southeast Louisiana as well. The flash flooding in Baton Rouge last night, uh, which received about nine inches of rain in certain parts uh, of, of the Baton Rouge area, is a perfect example of how problems can quickly develop well away from the center of the storm. Uh, in fact, we've seen some sporadic power outages in East Baton Rouge and Ascension parishes already today. And on the topic of power outages, just an update on the number of crew that are here, crew members. There are 6,500 to 7,000 linemen and other utility crew members in state prepositioned, and another 7,000 or so are on standby out of state uh, awaiting a call to come in to help restore power should that become necessary. We cannot predict where the greatest risk for flash flooding will be because we don't know exactly where the rain bands will set up and cause prolonged periods of rainfall, but we do know that flash flooding and potentially some river flooding uh, is possible as this storm moves through the state. It is important that while you still have power, keep your phones and other devices charged in order to receive emergency weather alerts and to be able to communicate as best as possible. Please watch your local media and monitor the National Weather Service 
and listen for important updates and information from your local leaders and emergency managers. The storm is moving relatively quickly uh, from the time it hits the shore to about uh, to when it leaves the state should be about 14 hours. As we remember with Hurricane Laura, once the storm has passed, there will still be threats to people's lives and safety. Uh, and in fact, uh, we now attribute 30 deaths to Hurricane Laura, and only one of those was caused by the direct and immediate storm itself. So treat every power line that's down as if it's live. Uh, don't go out sightseeing. You're going to interrupt uh, first responders and people who may be needing to do search and rescue and so forth. Uh, listen to your local officials. If you have evacuated, they will tell you when it's safe to return. Uh, don't drive through standing water when you're not 100% sure that it is shallow enough and doesn't have current and that it is uh, safe for you to cross. Uh, continue to monitor 511LA.org for road closures. Uh, that will be updated as real-time information. As we have mentioned many times, if you're going to be using a generator, uh, please make sure that you're following the manufacturer directions and uh, avoid carbon monoxide poisoning. Uh, and this occurred with nine individuals after Hurricane Laura. Uh, and do that by making sure that you put that generator at least 20 feet away from your home uh, and a well-ventilated area outside. Uh, again, not under a window or a vent, not in a crawl space or a garage, anything like that. The National Guard has more than 2,500 guardsmen activated in support of emergency operations. Um, you know I'm, I'm proud of all of our team members in the state. Uh, that certainly includes the National Guard. Um, but remember that, that for your planning purposes, assume that the first 72 hours will be on you but it will be National Guardsmen, State Police, Wildlife and Fisheries Officers, Fire Marshals Officers, or, or search and rescue teams that we brought in from out of state will get there just as soon as possible. And of course, there will be local officials working on that as well. The Coastal Protection and Restoration Authority is tracking 689 gates across the coastal zone, 355 of which are now closed. That is up from 305 that were closed yesterday. As of this morning, 9,537 Louisianans were being sheltered. 6,300 of those were because of Hurricane Laura. Uh, and then there's an additional 2,000 from Laura that are in Texas. Uh, more than 800 evacuees are because of Hurricane Delta. And they are primarily at the mega shelter in Alexandria, which has reached its capacity because with COVID-19, we have reduced capacity there of about 833. Uh, and then we will be moving individuals as necessary to other shelters further north, starting with the shelter in Bastrop. Uh, and when that one's full, we will use the Juella uh, shelter in Shreveport. The Department of Transportation developed assisting, uh, I'm sorry, assisted in transporting more than 500 evacuees uh, by bus, in fact, 21 bus loads uh, to Alexandria last evening. Most of those individuals were from Calcasieu Parish. Sheltering directions are specific to each parish. So if you need information, please text LA Shelter to 898-211. 898, I'm sorry, LA Shelter to 898-211. Additionally, you can tune into your local media and contact your local Office of Emergency Preparedness for more information. I do want to remind everybody, uh, as I try to always do, that everything we're doing, we're doing in a COVID-19 public health emergency environment. Um, and just because we're dealing with a natural disaster doesn't mean that the public health emergency is going to call time out and allow us to do that without being uh, compliant with all the COVID protocols. Uh, so we need people to be mindful of what those mitigation measures are. Uh, and it's more important than ever that we wear our mask and social distance when we're 
around people who are not part of our immediate household, that we wash our hands frequently. Um, certainly that uh, we protect those who are most vulnerable. Today, with respect to COVID, we are reporting 265 new cases of COVID-19. Uh, sadly, we also are reporting 26 deaths today. There are 582 people hospitalized and 78 of those are on ventilators. You will note that our case count today of 265 is much lower than we've been reporting and that's because we did a lot fewer tests yesterday. Uh, we were reporting only 9,872 tests and that's because of Hurricane Delta. We had to suspend much of our community uh, testing and we hope to get that back up just as soon as possible, certainly not later than Monday of next week. One trend that concerns me, and I mentioned this yesterday, is hospitalizations. So four of the last five days, we have seen increased hospitalizations. Uh, this is something that we're gonna continue to watch closely. Uh, obviously, we can't afford to threaten our ability to deliver life-saving care in our hospitals, especially as we enter the flu season. And also, as I mentioned yesterday, the positivity percentage has been inching up uh, over the last seven to 10 days as well, and that too is very concerning. We're gonna keep our eyes on that information and, and hopefully uh, we will see those numbers start to improve in the very near future. There's no doubt in my mind that that's exactly what will happen if enough people in Louisiana uh, follow all of the COVID protocols and mitigation measures that are in place. Finally, I would ask everyone to continue to pray for the best outcome, even as we prepare for the worst. Um, the weather event is impacting our communities and our people as we speak. So please stay safe, stay put, uh, and be vigilant. Um, we won't know yet, uh, we don't know yet what time tomorrow we will have a press uh, conference, but we do anticipate having one. Um, obviously, we will be waiting for the weather to clear uh, so that we can go take a look at the damage and start coordinating uh, additional response activities with local officials and with our federal partners. But we know that we're going to try to uh, have a press availability tomorrow as well. We will let you know what time that's going to be as soon as that's finalized, and that may not be until tomorrow morning. So with that, I'm going to pause and take your questions. Greg? The answer is yes. Uh, they were scheduled to stop at about 9 o'clock this morning. I'm going to look over here at my transportation secretary. That is, in fact, correct. So we are no longer moving individuals by bus. There are some individuals who are self-transporting in their own vehicles. Um, and when they go to the mega shelter, for example, in Alexandria, um, they're going to be received and, and uh, they're going to uh, uh, be given uh, an opportunity to, to get some water, get snacks and, and so forth. But then they will be directed to Bastrop. And then as we know that we're approaching the capacity at Bastrop, additional individuals will be directed to Juella in Shreveport. Yes, sir. Well, they went to the to the mega shelter in Laura too, and then we transported them to the uh, uh, shelters, the, the hotels, the non congregate shelters as quickly as we could. So our plan uh, is to put individuals in the non congregate shelters uh, for the shortest amount of time possible. So that when this storm clears the area tomorrow, those individuals who can go home will go home. Those who cannot will be put in to a uh, non-congregate shelter, into a hotel room. Uh, so we don't expect these individuals to be in our non-congregate shelters uh, for more than about 24 hours at the longest. Uh, and and that's, that's what our, our plan is um, <clears throat> because we, we believe that there will be a number of these individuals who will be able to return home tomorrow and they won't need to be in a hotel room. Uh, but I, I do want to remind everybody that all of the COVID protocols are in place. Uh, which is why the capacity 
uh, at the mega shelter in Alexandria is 833, uh, when ordinarily we would be able to put several thousand uh, people in that shelter. And it's not just the spacing uh, that, that we're looking for, but it's all of the PPE, the sanit sanitizing of the, of the area and so forth. Yes, sir. Well, there's not concern for tonight because the vast majority of people who are going to evacuate have already evacuated. So, so we're going to continue to uh, utilize these shelters uh, today. And, and like I said, we will add folks to Bastrop, we'll add folks to Juella. Uh, we don't believe that we're going to uh, exceed the overall capacity tonight. Uh, and then by, by tomorrow, we will start moving those individuals who cannot go home into hotel rooms. So we don't see that that's going to happen. Um, but obviously, we're working in close coordination with all the parishes to try to monitor the number of people who are leaving. And you, you have to remember, there are also parish shelters that are set up as well. So, so individuals are not all coming to the state shelters. Uh, and, and so we don't anticipate that that's going to happen. And we will move people uh, quickly tomorrow. Uh, either back home or into hotel rooms. Yes, sir. So based on the number of people who have arrived at these shelters, do you anticipate you have enough hotel rooms to allocate these rooms? Yeah. Are you going to have to go out You know, that, that's a hard question to answer because I just have to think back to Laura. Um, and we had, uh, for about two weeks after Laura, every night we were sheltering more people than we had the night before. And so we really don't know until we see the, the amount of damage. Uh, that is sustained because of Hurricane Delta uh, and, and what that flow of individuals is going to look like. Um, we don't anticipate right now that we will get back uh, to uh, such a large number that we won't be able to house them uh, in non-congregant shelters, these hotels. Uh, and we now have a very good working relationship uh, with more than 40 hotels across the state because we just went through this exercise. Um, and I'm not going to tell you that, that there aren't always uh, some developments that make things harder and so forth, but we feel really good about our ability to expand our shelter capacity as we need to do it. Yes, sir. On the sheltering, um, the state did a lot of contracts and they needed wraparounds and so on to shelter folks in hotels. Um, how many are in place? I know we just consolidated down to 12 earlier this yeah. week. Yeah, I don't know if, if uh, the, the question is how many contracts are in place with hotels right now uh, for additional shelters. And, and Governor, we, we still have, it's my understanding, we still have about uh, somewhere between 3,000 and 5,200 rooms available under the con current contracts, uh, majority of those are new ones. And, th and those rooms are available, they're not filled. That's correct. That's yeah. Correct. So, so to answer the question, because I, I know that uh, General Loscombe wasn't here at the podium, is that under the current contracts in place, there are between 3,500 and 5,000 rooms that are available in New Orleans right now for additional evacuees. And, and if we need to, we will go beyond that. Yes, sir. I can, and uh, General Hopkins, I want you to be uh, ready to come up if I, if I miss some of this. So the, the mission set uh, for this disaster is, is basically the same as it was for Hurricane Laura. So all the things that we talked about that the National Guard did, that they're preparing for now. So it's search and rescue with high water vehicles, uh, with boats, and also with uh, aircraft. Uh, it's it's uh, making sure that, that our warehouses are receiving uh, tarps and food and water and other things that are coming from the federal government. It's setting up uh, uh, convoys. Uh, for example, in Roseland, Louisiana, I can tell you we, we're set up right now with all, the, all the, uh, the trucks that are loaded ready to go out to conduct about 14 points of distribution as early as tomorrow, as soon as local government uh, asks for that assistance. Uh, we're providing uh, security uh, at fixed sites, whether they are uh, 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 shelters that, that we've been talking about, but also additional security, for example, down in Calcasieu Parish, working with the, the Calcasieu Sheriff. Um, where they're providing LNOs to various, various parish offices of emergency preparedness, and a whole myriad of, of missions that they are leaning forward on, and that they will, many of which they, they're executing now, if it's preparations for the storm, you know that they, 
They uh, put in place more than 200 super sacks uh, on the island of, of uh, Grand Isle on the, on the southwest side. But they're also raising the levy uh, on the north side of that island as well. So, General Hopkins, if there's other missions that you want to come in and mention, you can do that. Uh, sir, that uh, summed it up. Lee Hopkins uh, with the National Guard. Uh, really, we focused on three lines of effort, which is preparing for the post storm operations, uh, moving in our search and rescue assets across the, the parishes that could be impacted, ensuring that they're set and ready to go. Uh, we have also established, as the governor mentioned, our commodity distribution system out of Roseland and prepared those uh, distribution points so we can quickly move forward uh, and alleviate suffering as, as uh, those parishes uh, the, the, the demand signal begins. Uh, we also have our local leadership on the ground amongst these parishes, ensuring that we're coordinating with local leaders to, uh, to assess their future needs and to plan for post-storm operations so that we can move as quickly as possible uh, to uh, support the citizens of Louisiana. Uh, so, but the Louisiana Guard is ready. As the governor said, we have over 2,500 soldiers uh, and airmen who are in place, uh, and we're ready to respond when called upon. Thank you. Thank you, General. Thank you, General Hopkins. Any other questions? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Well, first of all, I hope that they that they understand that their local leadership um, and law enforcement, all of their first responders, are standing up um, to do everything that they possibly can to help in this situation. Uh, state agencies and personnel are doing the same. You just heard about the National Guard, but but we've got wildlife and fisheries officers. We've got um, uh, fire marshals uh, agents, and and we've got state police. We've got uh, I think five search and rescue teams from other states that are in this state co-located with us right now, uh, and more coming uh, from FEMA as well. Um, and so we're leaning forward. We're going to do everything we can to help the people of Louisiana who are impacted by this storm, many of whom, as you just mentioned, were just several weeks ago, uh, suffered the brunt of Hurricane Laura. Uh, and we know that we haven't uh, fully recovered. In fact, we're nowhere, nowhere close to being fully recovered. And so we have structures that are still compromised, whether it's their roofs or, or otherwise. Uh, we know that, that, uh, that some people are still evacuated and families have not yet uh, been reunified. So this is a very tough time. But we also know the people of Louisiana and in southwest Louisiana are very tough and resilient and faithful. Um, and we're going to get through this. And, and uh, it's not going to be easy. Nobody should take this lightly. Um, I, I'm, I'm going to be praying that this storm uh, moves through just as quickly as it possibly can, uh, that it stays true uh, to the northeast uh, direction that is forecasted so that uh, that the, the impacts to the Lake Charles area, for example, aren't more than they would otherwise be. Um, but at this point in time, you know, we can't say for exactly sure we know what this storm is going to do. Um, but, but as I mentioned, we, we are, we're confident that there will be hurricane force winds felt uh, in and around Lake Charles and in other areas of southwest Louisiana that were, that were very damaged. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and so we know that this is going to exacerbate what is already a bad situation. And I just want, I want folks to be hopeful because we know that we're going to do everything that we can, working with our federal partners and local partners, to get them uh, right side up again. Um, and, and I also want to, want to uh, just thank the people in advance for being good neighbors to one another. That's what Louisianans do best. Um, we're seeing it as we prepare for the storm, especially the faith-based community. And we know we're going to see it uh, tomorrow once the storm uh, exits the area. We're going to see uh, all of the volunteers, the faith-based communities, families and neighbors taking care of one another. Uh, and that really should be a source of inspiration and hope for everybody. Um, and then we're going to work through and, and just uh, continue to recover uh, from Hurricane Laura and, and uh, Hurricane Delta just as soon as we possibly can, leaving no stone unturned. Uh, and we're going to bring every uh, bit of assistance to bear that we possibly can to, to benefit our people. So again, as I mentioned earlier, uh, don't know when tomorrow we'll have a press availability, but we will, we will let you all know. Thank you for your continued coverage. Uh, ask the people of Louisiana to be vigilant. Uh, let's prepare for the worst uh, and certainly uh, pray for the best and, and be good neighbors to one another. And let's do it all uh, 
mindful that we're in a COVID environment. So God bless and thank you very much. Promise more to come in the future for all kinds of stuff. So thank you.